Good kitten internet, and welcome back to FTL, where we're going through our easy run on the Adjudicator, also known as Sultana. I am Aspen. Boo Kitty is over to my left, and you currently can't see her. She's curled up. Don't want to disrupt her too much, because she's being cute. And where we last left off, we are about to enter Sector 8. The Last Stand. <coughs> so this is the Federation. You arrive at an outpost close to the Federation base. Your access codes get you past initial security, and an officer sets up a direct feed to the Federation base's war room. Admiral Tully speaks first. What is the meaning of this? Who are you? You explain the mission. Your explanation is met with murmurs of cynicism and disbelief. Officers. General Terzil of the Engi Brigade speaks up. Intel suggests potential counter to rebel technology. Risk all or save none. Explain the weakness of the enemy fleet, the rebel flagship. Tully responds, It's settled. The rebels will be here in a matter of moments. We will do what we can to hold off their warships, but you must succeed in destroying this flagship. Your current outpost can provide some repairs and fuel, and the other repair stations can provide aid as well. Good luck. So we receive 10 fuel, and it heals us by 10. That's the reason why I wasn't too concerned about having 10 haul off. Um, this is a very different sector compared to most, because what we actually are doing is that we need to make sure that this ship here does not reach this base. And you'll notice that they're starting pretty close to it. However, they're much slower in moving than we are. Um, the base will be destroyed if they spend three consecutive turns sitting on the base. So we do have time. And we can investigate things. Anything that's glowing like this is going to become a rebel fleet. So it's kind of like the rebel invasion, except the rebel invasion happens in random spots. And what we need to do is fight this flagship. But we're also probably not going to be getting too much more in the way of scrap. So now is the time to spend scrap. And the spend I am going to. Um, seeing enemy weapon charge is not a terrible idea. It's not all that useful. Um, hacking increase might not be a terrible idea. I mean, I'm doing those no matter what. It's also, one of my favorite songs. Really don't need an increase in medbay. Medbay 1 is fine. We're not doing a boarding setup. Uh, oxygen 2 is fine. Really, this is what I would want to increase, and I don't quite have enough to justify it. So, hopefully I'll be able to get a little bit more scrap. So, unlike normal, I'm not going to dilly-dally to get to the base. Two, three, one, two, three. Four is sufficient. Three would be over. Oh, I forgot to power up the helper beam first. Rat. Oh, that was a mistake. Uh, they have a med bay. Never mind. I better do everything at once. Cloak. I could drain their med bay now that I think about it. I think I'd rather drain. Weapons, I guess? Fields. Red beam. Here. That bio beam Pull on this side.
I will have some. That is a boarding drone. Boarding drone's gonna suck to deal with. Rerouting to the drone control so I don't have to deal with the stupid thing. So yeah, boarding drone will hit your ship, punch a hole through the hull, doesn't matter how much shields you have, doesn't matter much of anything as long as it can get through. The only way you can really counter a boarding drone like that is by having your own defense drones. It sucks. There's nothing I can do about it, though. Um, other than take out their drone bay as fast as I can. Right. Do I want to just take them out? I think the answer. You're dead. Alright. So, now I need to repair that big gaping hole in the ground. Easiest way to do that is to flood my ship with as much oxygen as I can, so I don't lose too much at once. Then go to med bay after. Up. Good job, Bigby. Ready to return to station. Get oxygen up a little bit higher. That'll work. Luckily, when they puncture the hole in your hull, they don't actually um, damage your ship. Otherwise, this would suck. Anyway, I do have enough to get up to maximum shields now. Yep. So yeah, basically the flagship will start here, take a turn to move, then arrive, then take a turn to move. Yeah. I'm probably going to end up meeting them like over here or something. Ah, automated rebel ship. I will cloak and attempt to cast the cash. I succeed. I get a combat drone mark one that's useless, but more importantly, 40 scrap. Hold on to it for now. I may end up wanting to bump up power instead. I am a little on the low. Actually, I'm just going to bump up power now. I am a little on the low side on power. I'm using so much power into weapons. It's been a long time since I've had like an eight power weapon set up. Large number of trans or number of large transports are being pursued by a rebel bombing squadron. One bomber has managed to slip through the defensive fire and is poised to wreak havoc among the enormous yet vulnerable transports. There's still time for you to advance and take it out. Let's fight. All right. Defense one. That's a shield overcharger. But you're going down as fast as I can. Decent stuff. Come pay. So yeah, the overcharger, what it does is it generates a Zoltan field. And that would really hurt. Put it mildly. I only have 10 missiles left, so I need to be a little more careful. Just going to destroy them, I think. Although, I could potentially do it if they don't finish recovering that. Oh, 
Oh, right. I forgot. Mm, that was dumb of me. I'll just destroy them. Uh, hit shields. Just wipe them. All right, you're free to contact their would-be victim. Primarily refugees fleeing the conflict. They offer you their sincere gratitude. No reward, but I have gratitude. Isn't that more important? Go like that for it. All right, they're about to take that. That's going to be rebel owned. That sucks. I was hoping that this would not turn rebel. So the repair stations will give you things like missiles and fuel. And the base itself does nothing. The reason why I was saying that sucks. And of course, they start attacking. We're going to have to go after the rebel flagship as is. Let's do it. That is the rebel flagship. This is it. The Rebel Flagship. If you are able to destroy this monstrosity, the Federation fleet will have a chance of surviving. There's no turning back! It's going to immediately cloak, by the way. Notice it has four shields. And yes, I am saving my cloak. I have to. Alright. So, it has four really powerful ship weapons. Um, what we need to do is, one, we need to take out that cloak, because otherwise this is, they're just going to dodge everything that we throw. So, in order to do that, we need to first take out their shields. Using the traditional method. Damn it, that went in the wrong order. Should have delayed a little bit. Hit two rooms. I'm not concerned about that hit. I'm concerned about the missiles. Um, drop this down a little. Right, Soaring. Yes. Actually, no. Hacksawing their cloak might not be a terrible idea. Or. I really hate this particular artillery. That's going to be the one that I'm going to cloak through. Axor shields. It's going to be the only way I can do this. There's... That cloaking. Do not want to get hit by that ion. That ion hurts. We shields a little bit more. I'm thinking about just taking out the impact bio beam entirely. Yep, we're doing that. Now a thing. We will not populate Haxoring until we actually need it. Oh, now's not the worst. Wait, I thought I told you to go after shields. I did. It's just graphically displaying weird. I mean, now is not a bad time to hack sword. Now that I'm looking, because it's going to drain shields. And bomb the damn book. Haha, -ha, victory. Beat up shields more. That worked. Okay. Um. By the way, the final boss is difficult. I don't know if I've mentioned that. Oh. Hey. 
And honestly, I don't care about killing them right now. In fact, you don't want to kill everybody on the ship, by the way. Please do not kill everybody on the ship. It starts going into a kind of berserk-like mode. They're hacksawing my shields. That sucks for me. And for them. And you notice only part of the ship explodes and the rest of it moves. Just as you gain the upper hand, it finds a way to make the F an FTL jump. Got to keep up the assault. We get a little bit of scrap and we're still fully healed. So there's no real difference there. All we want to do is drop shields down, activate the anti-bio beam again. Kind of wish I had a different weapon in my inventory. Don't. There's no shops here. So it's on its way to base. So what we can do is move over to base. That's what I'm going to do right now. I don't think we can buy anything at 30 that's useful. And we can see their weapon charge. That's not the worst, but mm, it's not. Um, actually, increasing autopilot. I have a reason for this, and that's it will take one extra point of damage to destroy. Jump to base. Hi again. You chase down the flagship and discover it is heavily damaged. Previous fight. Scans indicate that it has redirected considerable power to its drones. Get ready for a fight. This is actually the hardest battle in my life. So, the first battle, the complication was the ion cannons and the uh, cooking device. This battle, the complication is the freaking drones. Because holy crap, drones. So, as usual, we're focusing on their first. However, they have far more drones than they did before. Which is the part that sucks. You know what? I'm just doing that. It's not going to be able to make it across more. Actually, it might now that I'm looking. Okay, I at least dealt three damage to hull. I don't know why I bought Haxor shield or Haxor drone? Oh wait, they have a defensive drone. It's not, this is not going to work. Get it down, yeah. Fire it. That didn't do it. All right, we have already lost our um, Sultan shield. Build at maximum. Power from oxygen, power from hacking, actually. All right. We have our boarding. Boarding drones are nasty, especially in this fight. They teleported a firebomb onto us. Cool. Hacking is down entirely. I'm going to increase oxygen, that way I don't have to worry about the hole in my ship right now. Albert Beam. Power surge detected. This is the thing I was talking about for the massive amount of drones that are about to pop up. Now that it appears, cloak. Also flack them. 
Actually, now I probably should have been flanking. Hello, go over there and help, please. Pull back. Third beam. Hit. Really, just hit as much as you can. Unfortunately, this design is not conducive to hitting more than four rooms. Do that. It's oxygen four. Hand bomb's not useful at the moment. Black, however, is. Black him. Got it. Okay. So we have finished phase two. Just as you finally get the upper hand, it finds a way to make an FDL jump. You've got to keep up the assault. But that's the last one that's going to be a major problem. We have some repairs that we need to do. We should do that. We've only taken two hull damage. This is an amazingly good run so far. Build and report to the infirmary. Heal up. People who are injured, please. Zinzin, Zin, please report to the infirmary. Uh, Shin Shin. Everybody healed. Please, everybody report back to stations. One more power, I guess, because I can't afford one more hacking. But one more power it is. It'll help. Anti-bio beam is... Ish. Still gonna throw it on there just because it might help if I can get it down low enough. All right, it's going back here, so we're going to pursue. Exit, chased by a bear. Notice that it now has a nice, lovely Zoltan shield. You're not certain how it's been how it's able to keep fighting with the amount of damage it sustained. Looks like it's transferred its power to the teleporter as well as some kind of super weapon. Be prepared. This is it! This is the final form of the final boss. You know what? I think the anti-bio beam actually does stuff when we're in this form because I think it counts as hitting things. However, notice we've got the stupid mind garbage. And no, it doesn't. Good to know. things can I hit at once? I think it's just me. I think it's me. Oh, it's four. Go to cloak so everything can recharge because they still have a Zoltan shield up. They still have a Zoltan shield up. Now there's Zoltan shields down. Ah, uh, crap. I misdid that. Um, I thought the thing was later. Everything thrown into engines. Let's get as high of a dodge as possible because this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt a lot. Not ready to fire. So this is what happens. All that hit. Unfortunately, that took out my Zoltan shield, so they now have men controlled somebody and are going to and have started teleporting people. Fortunately, they might control the person in the damn doors. A really bad scenario I messed up. I'll be fine, I just messed up. Damage. 
Okay. Track them for a little bit. Right, I have at least got Cloak back. That's going to help. The super weapon is going to entirely miss. You're blinking. You need to move. You need to open that. You've died. Cool. Really wish I could have used the anti bio beam on my own area. Um, please stop with your damn mind control already. Okay. Bomb that, please. Thank you. All that. Hey, hit the damn mind control. Good. Temporarily increase health. Need to regen. From oxygen. Get as much shield as I can get. This is what I mean by I usually don't talk all that. I'm going to take some hull damage. Got it. We did it. Mind you, everybody's dying right now, but we did it. There's a fire in the engine. Most of my ship is currently, you know, venting directly to the atmosphere. Everything's damaged. Doesn't matter. We succeeded. Thanks to the valiant effort of the Adjudicator and her successful crew, Frizz, Zinzin, Buffy, Schultz, Nathan, Willow, Bigby, and Shelton. The Rebel's flagship was destroyed, throwing their fleet into chaos and ensuring a Federation victory. And that is a successful FTL run. Things only started going really bad in the final boss, and the final form of the final boss at that. That's pretty good, actually, in my mind. Um, That run went extremely well. I do not expect my next run to run anywhere near that smoothly. Not even close. I fully expect it to go horribly wrong. But I am going to let the credits read. Um, I mentioned this at the beginning, but FTL is available um, from both Steam and GOG and several other locations. Also available for Windows, Mac, Linux, and iOS, actually. Don't think there's a uh, Android version, unfortunately. Always wanted one, but... Well, I have Windows, and I even have a tablet over to my right that runs both Windows and Linux, so... I'm fine on FTL in that regard. I think it would be nice to be able to use it. Um, yeah. I think that's really about it. I'm just trying to wait through all the credits because I'm not polite to stop it. Before. Yeah, Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS. Um... Not sure what else... To Talk about by the end. Um, this is the reason why I was planning on alternating between FTL runs and Master of Magic runs, because one, an FTL run's really short, and uh, one way or the other, and two, they're both the type of game that I replay repeatedly. I like playing a series of 4X games on a row to kind of 
get my taste and get myself back into it and then stop playing for a while. And FTL, I typically run a series of runs for a little bit as well. And this is the fourth episode. I recorded all four in the same day. It took me like three and a half hours to finish a run. And that was with me talking and jabbering almost the entire time. I know this one, I was a little more quiet, but well, I needed to concentrate a little bit more. And yeah, so my plan is to do at least two more FTL runs. Um, one on medium, one on hard, or one on normal one, excuse me. Uh, and then I don't know if I'm going to switch back to Master of Magic or if I'm going to immediately start setting up for Wild Arms 2. Depends on how well the runs go, I think, and it depends on my mood. Um, Wild Arms 2, I'm going to relocate. So right now I'm at my gaming computer, gaming desktop, and for Wild Arms 2, I'm actually going to relocate over to the TV. Main reason being that, well, it's... It's a game that feels more like a couch game to me. And this chair is not very comfortable. Uh, wait, I not be able to now. There's a weird issue with my... Anyway, um... But yeah, I haven't decided yet how I'm going to run Wild Arms 2. I may end up just deciding to run it on an actual PS1. And I may decide not to because the game runs like garbage on a PS1, oddly enough. Um, there's a lot of frame rate losses, especially toward the end. Yeah, we're only in M, and I'm out of things to talk about. How goes? Blue Kitty, you want to be in the video too? I guess you didn't want to that much. Blue Kitty butt. Yeah, so again, FTL is a short game. Uh, it's not too hard to figure out how to play. It's hard to figure out what to do. And this is on easy. One, I got very lucky during this run. I didn't have any horrible, terrible problems. But more importantly, two, I've played so much that easy is genuinely... You know, whereas when I first started playing, easy was difficult and normal was practically impossible. <sighs> Do I go random again, or should I choose? I guess for the normal run, I could go. I would like to get my remaining achievements, because I only have three that I um, Boarding Objective Successful, Diplomatic Immunity, and the Hidden Achievement. So that might be interesting. There we go. Victory! Congratulations, you've defeated the Rebel flagship and ensured the victory of the Federation. My score is only 3690. Not the greatest. It is my best one for Adjudicator A, but given that's the first one I've actually beaten, that's not too surprising. Looks like I've, according to history, only played it four times, and only one of them did I actually get beyond Sector 1. These, uh, This was probably just me loading and going, eh, I don't feel like playing. And this was probably me ending the run early because Sector 1 went terrible. Yeah. You can tell that I'm much better at the other ones, given that I have normal victories on both of those. Both of which have higher scores than this one. But hey. Those are our top scores. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this interview. Talk to you next time. Oh, um, before I do, I wanted to go through what the achievements actually were. So these are general progression achievements. Uh, the first two is just getting to those sectors. Uh, it actually has shown that I've unlocked it on hard. But I know for a fact I've played on hard on this computer shortly before I started. I think I got to Sector 8. Um, beating the boss on easy. Beating the boss on normal. Unlocking Type A for every ship. Getting 10,000 scrap across all games. I got that pretty early, actually. Uh, defeating 1,000 ships across all playthroughs. Getting to Sector 5 without firing a shot using an offensive drone or teleporting. That was interesting. 
uh, getting Sector 5 with no system or reactor upgrades. I've done it. Uh, my ship was basically falling apart and held on by duct tape at that point. On a wing and a prayer, get to Sector 5 without repairing at a store. I actually did all three of these on the same run, for reference. Um, Ballistophobia, get to Sector 8 without using any missiles or bombs. I've done that on hard, because I usually don't use too many missiles in my strategies. This one was an exception. Pictophobia, do it without getting without using drones. I definitely was using drones in that run. Do it without buying anything in a store. That sucks, and it's... You have to really luck into it, basically. You have to find everything that you want, which you can do. You saw me get, like, the same upgrade and the pre-igniter twice. That's really abnormal. Uh, then get to Sector 8 without seeing a crew member. I've only unlocked that on easy. We did that this time, in fact. But I've only ever done it on easy. Then empty the oxygen of a non-automated hostile enemy ship. I've done that on hard. That's fun. You even saw me do it on this game for easy. Hit every room of a ship with at least one beam in under five seconds. That one's fun. I could have actually done it with this ship. It only requires two beams. And you have to do it on one of the smaller ships, like one of the Autobots. Um, trustworthy autopilot. Defeat an enemy ship with all of your crew aboard it. So you basically teleport your entire crew over to the other side and start fighting on the ship. Um... Never saw it coming. Use the pre-igniter augmentation to destroy an enemy ship in one volley before the enemy can get off a single shot. You actually saw me do that in this run. Uh, the one that I don't have, have a single boarding drone kill four crew members on one ship. You saw the boarding drones hit my ship. They don't work as well when I fire them off onto an enemy ship. You have to combine it with other strategies to make that work, because even four Engi can probably take on one boarding drone. Fail to evade five shots in a row with a fully powered and upgraded engine. The only reason why I've unlocked this on easy is that I usually die on shot four on the other difficulties. And then there's my favorite achievement. Have every square of an enemy ship on fire simultaneously. That's just hilarious to do. That run worked great other than the final boss. But yeah. That's FTL. Hope you've enjoyed this, and for at least uh, Peter, who's watching this most likely, hope this gives you some ideas as to how to play at least easy. Uh, maybe next video on normal might be more. For now, I've been Aetherspoon. I'll talk to you next time. Bye!